Sonic's owned by Sega. Speed Racer's owned by Tatsunoko. Got it? Good. Let's go. Sonic the Hedgehog. Speed Racer. Two characters created generations apart, whose stories don't seem to have that much in common, but may be more similar than meets the eye. But how? Aside from both being high-velocity action-adventure series, what could a series about a young race car driver in a gadget-filled car and a cocky blue robot fighting hedgehog have in common? A little more than you might think, and I don't just mean the shared tropes on the surface. Sure, both series seem to feature primary colored main heroes, racing across hills trying to avoid going over that cliff! <laughs> Sometimes with platforming. A bruiser in red, a mechanically inclined best friend in yellow, an overbearing girlfriend type character in pink and red, the annoying kid, a cool rival with a mysterious past and government ties, and surprisingly quite a number of bad guys with facial hair. There's also a few other tropes like doppelgangers, ancient tribes, and for better or for worse, copious amounts of time travel. It's also hard to talk about either series without bringing up its heightened voice acting. Ha! Huh. You're not even good enough to be I'll my make you eat those words! I wouldn't be able to race. Kim, now you know I wasn't lying. Yes, and it's too bad they did that to my car. You would have lost anyway. But I'm not talking about any of that. I'm talking about how the creation and success stories of both Speed Racer and Sonic the Hedgehog mirror each other in ways you might find surprising. And yeah, I know, Speed Racer is called Maha Go 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 in Japan, and the cast all have Japanese names, but I'm an American, so I'm gonna use the American names, okay? You know, like Dr. Robotnik. Tatsuo Yoshida's Speed Racer was pretty famous for being one of the first Japanese anime to grace the United States, quickly becoming a classic among its contemporaries such as Spider-Man and Johnny Quest. Like its prototype manga series Pilot Ace before it, Speed Racer wore its western influences on its sleeve. Speed's design was based off of Elvis, particularly his portrayals as young racers in Viva Las Vegas and Spin Out. Compounded with the perilous racing action seen in Grand Prix, the famous Mach 5's gadgets, as well as the more spy-based adventures found later in the show, were clearly lifted from the early James Bond films which were very popular at the time. It should be noted that the Mach 5 steering wheel is on the left side, indicative of American automobiles. Tatsuo Yoshida's love for idealized Western culture was received quite positively in Western audiences. Ironically, Japanese viewers seem to have a much more tepid response to the young racer's adventures. Decades later, Sega released Sonic the Hedgehog, a video game mascot to rival Nintendo's Mario. Sonic himself was designed by Naoto Oshima and Hirokazu Yasuhara, but had inputs from Sega of America's Tom Kalinske and Madeline Schroeder. Naoto Oshima has been on record saying, There has been a lot of Western influence on Sonic, such as his emblem, which was inspired by emblems of leather pilot jackets, to his basic tune shape drawn from Mickey Mouse, as well as Felix the Cat, to the buckles on Sonic's shoes which were based on Michael Jackson's boots, while the red-white coloring was based off Santa Claus's iconic suit. Sonic's proactive personality was taken straight from Washington, D.C., being inspired by the current president at the time, Bill Clinton, and his described get-it-done attitude. Sonic was also conceived to be a part of a rock band. While this idea never made it in the main game, the influence of the American musical genre has always been a staple of the series. Like Speed, Sonic has had many adventures around the world, but perhaps one of his most beloved locations is a zone highly resembling San Francisco, used for the first hero level in Sonic Adventure 2. San Francisco is a city in California, the 31st state in the US. Sonic the Hedgehog has garnered critical worldwide acclaim and high sales of games boasting over $1 billion, and that doesn't even include the profits from the merchandise, comics, or multiple TV spin-offs. However, there is one country where Sonic isn't all that too popular. It's his own home country of Japan. Needless to say, despite Sega having some of the largest video game industries in Japan with the arcades, the blue blur is best known off the island. Another commonality the Sonic series and the Speed Racer series has in common is they both have excellent films. There's a few things they can learn from each other. 
The 2008 Speed Racer film by the Wachowskis didn't get the credit it deserved during the time of its release by mainstream critics, but has since gained a cult following who praise the film for its unrestrained technicolor sense of speed and imagination at the same time, staying true to the heartfelt source material and even incorporating musical motifs from the original show, making it the definitive Speed Racer experience. While the 2020 Sonic the Hedgehog film had a script that was considered safe and unambitious, the director Jeff Fowler was praised for doing the unthinkable. For the first time in cinematic history, a director listened to the outcry of a fan base and changed the design of the titular speedster from this to this. All with the help of Sonic fan artist turned professional Sonic comic creator Tyson Hess. The success of the first film led to the release of Sonic Movie 2 in 2022, which followed a story more closely resembling the games, and quickly became the highest grossing video game based movie of all time. The Sonic movies are successful, no doubt about it, but if there are a couple things the Sonic films can gain from Speed Racer, is to not be afraid of going abstract, as the characters duke it out at higher and higher speeds, and more importantly, Please add the sonic music from the game aside from Green Hill! As for Speed Racer, it doesn't seem there will be a new film in the Wachowski-verse anytime soon. However, upon writing this script, I was informed there is a new Speed Racer series being developed for Apple TV+, and will be executively produced by J.J. Abrams, who actually wrote an unproduced script for the feature film. While the Speed Racer fandom is nowhere as large as the Sonic fandom, they are just as passionate. Whoever is leading the new series would be wise to listen to the fans, and trust me, they're not too hard to find. So, you might not know this, but originally this video was going to be titled, Comparing Sonic and Speed Racer, there's more similarities than you might think. But now you see the video is titled, Why Sonic Fans Should Watch Speed Racer. Well, I, I should give you some reasons why. As we've established, both series are created by the Japanese, but influenced with American culture. And, interestingly enough, they are both more popular in Western countries. However, Sonic the Hedgehog retains a lot of its anime-isms, while Speed Racer, well, it invented a lot of those anime-isms. So, for Sonic Adventure fans, if you like your high-stake adventures with energetic voice acting, or wonderfully absurd lapses in logic, you might get a kick out of the classic anime series. If you're a fan of the exhilarating spectacle of the Rush games, or the boost formula from Unleashed Generations, then you might really have a fun time with the Speed Racer movie. I mean, I think everyone should check that one out. Or, if you want to learn how not to do a legacy sequel, Sonic the Hedgehog Episode 4 and Speed Racer The Next Generation are great case studies. So Sonic fans, or anyone else watching, if you got a need for speed between those hurrying hedgehog games, uh, check out Speed Racer. You might have a really fun time. On the surface, their series doesn't look all that similar, but in the end, both are about family, friends, and fast adventures waiting just ahead. Thank you for watching! Okay, one more similarity is that both characters had a 1993 animated series produced by Deke Entertainment with a rock and roll intro and a rotund bad guy voiced by Jim Cummings. Neat, huh? Uh, I can't. 